Hi, I'm Francisco Espinoza. I'm an instrument and controls technician for the uh, city of San Jose. Uh, we're currently here in my instrumentation shop. Some of the normal things that I do with my work is uh, mostly we do like routine calibrations um, as far as, uh, you know, with our flows, mag meters, and differential pressure transmitters. Um, and that reads all of our pressures and stuff here on the plant. Well, currently, like what I do is I'm in instrumentation and our primary job function is automation. Something like this is how we make it happen with a, uh, with a this is a uh, programmable uh, controller. It's a dual loop that takes a lot of the analog inputs and outputs and converts it digitally. So that way the operator uh, can just go ahead and, and operate the machinery however they need to. First, it started off where, you know, in high school, I was really good in math and science. And so I was always taking uh, advanced placement courses for that. I mean, originally I wanted to become an engineer. I still do. I still like to pursue my electrical engineering degree. And so in going through high school, that's all they cram into for your university, for your university. Well, in one of my um, elective, my, uh, my uh, welding class, my shop teacher brought in a recruiter from one of the trade schools. And so, you know, like everybody else, I was half asleep, you know, as they were going through the different trades. So then he brought up instrumentation and the way he said it, he goes, if you're good at math and science, and then you want to get paid for what you know and not what you do, instrumentation's for you. And so, you know, I woke up, uh, paid attention a little bit, and then afterwards, I asked him about it, and then uh, I still had no idea what instrumentation is or was, you know, at that time. And then um, I just asked a recruiter for more information, looked into Perry Tech, found out that I could go to school for two years, you know, and then get, I could come out with the $80,000 career. Well, the best thing I like about my job is that I get paid to learn, you know. I mean, right now, you know, it's automation process control technology, so my job goes with the technology, and then and it always changed every six months, and depending on lowest bid and what equipment comes in here, you know, we got to learn it. If somebody was trying to get into instrumentation, um, I guess the, the best way to do it is as far as, uh, uh, pursuing that, I'd, ha I'd have to say look up ISA, which is Inter Instrumentation Society of America, or they usually change their name, it might be Instrumentation Society of Automation right now, but they set the standards for instrumentation, and usually that's where you can get into getting your certifications, and then they'll tell you what schools are represented by them so you can pr start getting some training and, and, and stuff. A lot of community colleges will offer some type of electrical instrumentation program or anything that has to do with PLCs and programming, uh, programmable logic controllers. Currently, we're out here at the secondary area of our plant, which takes the water in, clarifies it, and then it gets reprocessed uh, to filtration. This particular uh, valve here is our influent valve coming in. And, um, and so one of our routine things that we do on this particular valve is we'll check our calibration, check the limits, open and close, and then uh, confirm whether or not the VFD is okay. We'll do our specs checks. Now, upon installation of these valves though, some of the main things we gotta do is we'll do a full blown calibration on them. Part of doing that is, is uh, we'll hand wheel open and close to set our limits and then we simulate our 4 to 20 signal coming from the DCU using a simulator and then we calibrate the uh, 4 to 20 here. So that's kind of, this is one of the routines that things that we uh, do here on the plant and as you can see we have lots of these on site and so it keeps us pretty busy. 